Now that you have practiced and stopped practicing and practiced some more and stopped practicing and given some time and then picked up your bass and played and finally, bam! Wow, your thumb sounds good. Then let's add in the other fingers. Um, I tend to use these two fingers and in general, the way that I uh, add thumbing to my popping is that if I'm playing a low E string, I'll be popping with my first finger on the D string. And if I'm playing my A string, I'll be using my middle finger to pop up on the G string. Now, the way that I have my basses set up is so that there's the exact right height between the string height and the body of the bass, between the pickup and the fretboard, where I can rest my fingers on the body of the bass with the proper amount of my fingers underneath it which is just underneath the length of a fingernail. If, if the strings are too high and you have too much of your finger underneath the string, if you try to pull it up and pop it, you're going to be right on there on your joint and it's going to hurt a whole lot. And we don't want that to happen. So again, this is a, an easy motion, especially if you want to get going fast. You can't be using all these over-exaggerated physical motions to try to get something quick going. They need to be compact and succinct and precise. Um, so also conceptually that if you think that you're gonna be making the popping noise by actually curling your finger up and popping the fingers, popping the strings like that, again, I'll bet there's someone in the world who does that and is incredible. However, it's not the way that I do it. <laughs> so we'll just move on from that. My concept is this, is that it's sort of like the, you know, the queen wave. Hello. It's all this movement of the wrist, right? That's the, what the whole thing is. That's why you want to keep your hand and your wrist nice and loose. Because I'm slapping down, right? Again, I'm just sort of taking my hand, my wrist, and I'm moving my thumb from, from my neck down to my navel, right? And in the process of that, the strings get in the way, and the strings get hit, and hopefully they sound good. And if I've been a good boy and practiced real hard, it will sound good. So then for popping, if I have my hand here again, sort of parallel to the uh, neck of the, of the bass, uh, I can rest my, my hand against it, my arm against it, which leaves my forearm here conveniently ready to add some muting that we'll get into later. And then look, my fingers can go right here. My first finger underneath the G, D string, my middle finger underneath the G string. Uh, and then mm -hmm. it's the wave. After I, after I pop down, I'm flipping my wrist open. Mm -hmm. I'm opening up my mm -hmm. wrist, again, coming out, this time from my neck, down towards my feet, mm -hmm. opening up this way. And my fingers are underneath the strings. So by the act of me moving my wrist, the strings have to be plucked by my fingers that are going to be moving from underneath the string to away from the string. Okay, see how that works? So let's get and again, it's an easy back and forth motion. Sounds nice and full, doesn't it? Let's put on our metronome. Let's do a little series of exercises before our play along groove where we're going to be Popping from our E, open E, to second fret on our D string. Then we're going to go to G, octave A, an octave B. And we're going to do one hit, two hits, and so on. And uh, maybe we'll even do some uh, call and response on this one. So let's practice together, shall we? Make sure it sounds good.